Hello viewer, you are welcome to Africa Uncovered. Once again, my name is DJ and we want to thank you and appreciate you for taking off your time, off your busy schedule to be part of this broadcast, to be part of this show every other time we call up to you. We are really so glad that you're part of our channel and we thank you so much for that. Now, today we're going to be discussing, um, we're going to look at different projects in East Africa that have stolen. We're going to look at mega projects, projects where uh, millions and millions of money are meant or have been injected into these projects, but these projects have failed to take off or have stalled for so long. These are the projects that we're going to be looking at today in our broadcast on Africa Uncovered. You know, in on Africa Uncovered, we bring you stories, we bring you different things that are underlooked in day-to-day -day conventional media. We discuss them here. We tell you the in-depth analysis, sometimes just a few things that you need to understand about these things. So today we're going to look at those projects, mega projects, especially in the three East African countries, notable Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. The other, we're not going to handle the entire East Africa, but we're going to look at those three countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and their projects, mega projects, that have stalled for years, that have been meant uh, to be of very high value to these countries and have had heavy budgets, okay? And some of the monies had been disbanded to these projects, but these projects have stalled and some of them have entirely failed to take off right from uh, the design stage. So these are the projects that we're going to talk about. So sit, relax, and enjoy the show. The first project that we're going to look at is the Bagamayo port in Tanzania. The Bagamayo port is one of the oldest ports in East and Central Africa. And there were plans of, you know, making it big to be able to handle approximately 20 million uh, cargo trucks, 20 million cargo uh, containers, sorry, in a year or annually and the plans started hatching in 2015 when the agreement was signed to expand this port to make it big and massive to be able to serve literally all the east and central african countries and this project has since stalled the agreement that was made in 2015 was signed off and the first phase of this project was meant to be started in 2017 but as of 2020 they started uh, reports started surfacing in uh, newspapers and there was one particular report in kenya that said that this project had been cancelled and was not going to take on anymore was not going to go on anymore there is a number of factors that are looked at in this project projects like uh you know factors like uh, compensation of people within the community the funding itself you find that in most instances east african countries tend to want to work with asian countries to fund their projects especially in this particular case china and in most instances, China spreads wings so wide that in some instances they failed, they fail to honor their commitments. And in this regard, the issue of financing came up. The issue of sabotage has also come up in the project of Bagamoyo Port and then compensation, and then things to do with the environment. So many things, so many factors come into play to stall a project or to hinder the project from even taking off. So there were reports that surfaced in Kenya about the Bagamoyo port, much as it is in Tanzania. There were reports in 2020 that this project was indeed cancelled. However, in 20, 2023, again, other reports started coming up that they are trying to reorganize themselves to make sure that they, again this project kick starts but it has been a number of years ever since the idea was hatched 
to be able to expand this port, to be able to handle 20 million uh, containers and then be able to serve most of the East African countries. It has been years, it has been overdue, and that's why we thought we should bring it on our list of these of some of the projects that have stalled in, in three East African countries, notably Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. So the Bagamoyo port is a very, very important, very strategic um, economic project that has stalled that we thought, as a matter of fact, that people should know about that things have not been moving according to plan. There's an issue that I thought we would, you know, need to understand about Tanzania. Tanzania is very exclusive with its news, with its projects. When a project is going on in Tanzania, you barely get to know what is happening. The country is so seclusive that you never get to know even if they have an international policy. You will never hear them sending their troops to any other neighboring country. You will never hear them. They are nowhere in news. So even when there is a project that is going on in Tanzania, you barely get to know. You know, as per the Bagamoyo Port news, we are getting it from Kenya that this project indeed uh, was, was or is never going to take off. However, there were a few scanty reports here and there saying that in 2013, in 2023, this project was meant to, to be rejuvenated. However, still, there are new news as we speak right now about this project. So, I want to say that, I want to say that maybe this project might never take off. It is one of those failed projects that we are talking about. The other project that we want to talk about today is also in Tanzania, and that is the Kigamboni New City. Now, the Kigamboni New City was meant to be located in the south side, the south side of Dar es Salaam, the previous capital of Dar es Salaam, about you know 40 kilometers from uh, this city, and this. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the 40 kilometers from the former capital city of the Dar es Salaam. is where the Kigamboni new city was meant to be located. And uh, the, the project was launched in 20, 2013. In 2013, the project was launched and in 2015, at least a phase or two was meant to be done. But as we speak, the project has stalled. And this is a project that was meant to serve a magnitude of people, but due to different circumstances, including resettlement of almost 97,000 people that live in the community, that live within and around the community, their resettlement and other factors have led to the stallment of this project to an extent that it is no longer being talked about in Tanzania and even in East Africa. There are issues of settlement where they need to find a place to resettle these people before they are able to, to before they are able to build the city that they wanted to build, but also an issue of embezzlement of funds within the stakeholders that are supposed to find other places where they're supposed to relocate people. So it is one of those projects that have stalled. From 2013, you can imagine up to 2024, not even a single phase of this city, Gigamboni city, has been able to be done. So it is the reason why we bring it today to your attention that it is among those projects in East Africa, especially in the three countries that we're putting emphasis on of Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda that has stalled, that has failed to take off and probably might never take off because of different challenges that include financing and resettlement of people and then other stumbling blocks where the issues of court where people don't want to leave that location to go to other places and end up going to courts of law be able to block the uh, development you see there's a challenge with africa in a nutshell especially east african countries where people find it so hard when a development has to be done in their area they will find all possible ways to block that development from taking on. That's when they want to charge so highly when someone has a plot of land 
within which the project has to be. If it is valued at, let's say, 100 million, these, they are going to ask for a billion. If it is valued at 500 million, they want 2 billion because they know it is the government being involved. Being, uh, being involved. And yet they tend to forget that when these cities come, even when you're relocated, these cities benefit the community. They benefit the populace. They benefit the people within that location and the development that in a nutshell the development of a nation so when you block it you're blocking yourself your friends your probably your relatives that could have benefited from this project so kigamboni project as well is one of those projects that have faced the same challenge that you know people where people don't want to relocate even the look at the place where these people are going to be relocated because we're talking about 97,000 people this is a big number of people if you relocate them then you should have a strategic plan that is going to sustain them and make sure that they don't find difficulties in their uh, uh, well-being so it is one of those projects that I have stalled that we thought we should talk about today. All right, one of the other projects that we're going to look at today is the Mchuchuma and Linganga Iron and Ore project. The Mchuchuma and Linganga Iron Ore and Coal Mine is one of those projects that have stalled in Tanzania that people are wondering whether they are going to ever take off or not. Now, the Mchuchuma and Linganga Iron Ore and uh, an iron ore mine was meant to be one of those projects that are going to at least produce about 600 megawatts of electricity to the people of Tanzania to the grid added to the grid of Tanzanian electricity but also benefit the people of that Njombe community Njombe region where this project is located of course when the project is in the community then you expect it to first um, benefit the people of the community before it goes to other places. So this project uh, that was meant to be uh, producing 428 me megawatts, uh, 428 million tons of oil in Muchichuma and then 128 million tons in Linganga has failed to take off. It was commissioned years ago in 2011 and that's when the agreements and everything were reached for this project to take off at approximately 2 billion shillings. And the project was meant to be spearheaded by China as well as we understand that most of these projects in Africa, roads, mining, water, uh, electricity distribution and, and, and uh, everything is literally in most instances by China farms. So this project as well was meant to be worked upon by the Tanzania to a tune of approximately two billion shillings, two billion dollars, uh, two actually two trillion shillings, Tanzania shillings. But the project has not taken off due to a number of circumstances, including which is financing. In most instances, when these projects store the best, the, the major stumbling block in all the projects that we have looked at is financing. Now, it leaves you wondering why, before these countries embark on this project, they don't look out for the finance avenues, the avenues through which they're going to get money to finance these projects. In most instances, they want only to look up to donors and funders and when they come out to disappoint you or when they disappoint you and don't finance these projects the project stall so damchuchuma damchuchuma and linganga iron ore and coal project or mines have stalled exactly in the same circumstances that all other projects that we've looked at have stalled Okay, so those are some of the major three projects in Tanzania that we thought we would look at. One being the Muchuchuma and Linganga and Ore project. The other one being the Bagamoyo port and then the Chigamboni new city. So those are projects that have stalled in Tanzania that we don't know if they will ever take off or progress from the stages at which they are to another level. Now we go to, to Kenya. Uh, do we go to Kenya? 
Now in Kenya, there's a number of projects, so many projects that have been worked on, that are progressing well, very well. But there are particularly those that have failed to take off as well. Like any other country, there are those projects that would have uh, would start very well, or would have a very good plan, but fail to leave the ground level. Sometimes they die at the level of design. If it is a construction, the design is there, everything is there, then somehow they fail to get the budget. Somehow they fail to start. Somehow other stumbling blocks like codes and all those come in. So in Kenya, we're going to look at a number of projects as well that have failed to take off. And the first one is going to be the Kanza City. Call it the Kanza City. Now Kanza City is one of those cities that were meant to start in Kenya and was meant to be one of the most technological advanced cities in East and Central Africa and was meant to act as a hub. The preliminary things that have been worked upon in this city including roads and those small small things but as by 2015 there was only one building, an eight-storied building that was half complete at that time. Now this is a project that was started in 2011, but by 2015 only one project, only one building, an eight-story building, half complete, was done at that time. A few roads here and there that are meant to, you know, go through the city were, were done as well, but the project has been stalled according to the original plan. This city that was fashioned after the notable Silicon Valley in the United States was meant to be 60, is, not was meant, is 64 kilometers on Mombasa, Nairobi Mombasa Highway, and was, you know, supposed to ha be a size of 5,000 hectares. 5,000 acres was meant to sit on 5,000 5, acres and meant to cost approximately 1.2 billion shillings in Kenya, you know, billion shillings billion Kenya shillings but this project has not gone according to plan as we said by 2013 the, uh, the building the construction had kick-started but by 2019 only one building and eight uh, eight storied building had been built however no progress can be seen no notable progress can be seen in this city like if the uh, if the idea was conceived and concluded by 2011 and the first construction was then in 2013, you expect that at least by 2019, a notable progress to be seen. A number of buildings and uh, other things that were meant to be in the cities to be seen. We were meant to have schools that were meant to be, you know, uh, le leisure places in the city, you know, buildings for people to put in shops retail shops and all that, by, by 2019, nothing had been done, only one building, and as we speak in 2014, you still can't see much progress in this city. So Konga City is one of those projects in, the, in, in Nairobi, in Kenya, that have stalled for so long, and we thought people should know about them. If you haven't been following it up, then you need to follow it up and know what's going on. Read it in the papers, read it in the tabloids, ask the responsible people what could be happening to this project. So the Konza project is one of projects that are stolen in these three East African countries that we are looking at today. Now, Kenya being on the coast acts as a hub or an, a, a, an anchor point for supply for different countries in East Africa. Uganda, Kenya, Uganda South Sudan, even Congo, Somalia, and Ethiopia all benefit from Kenya being next to the sea. Now, the other project that we want to look at is supposed to help all these countries. It's supposed to benefit all these countries. The Lampset project is the, one of those projects that I've stored. Now, the Lampset project is the Lamu South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor project. Now, this project was meant to have a number of things, among them including a refinery, an oil refinery plant along that route, 
There was supposed to be a road corridor, a road from Kenya to South Sudan, heading to Ethiopia. There was also meant to be a rail line on the same corridor from Kenya to South Sudan and then to Ethiopia. There were a number of projects that are meant to be in the Lampset project that have stalled. The only notable progress or what has been done, as according to reports, is a police station and a few number of things that have been able to construct. But most of these mega, mega projects that are meant to be under the Lampset project have failed to progress in any way, shape or form. This project was literally meant to benefit three countries. The transport and other infrastructures, basic infrastructures, and so highly sophisticated infrastructures that we've talked about, the a port, you know, that was meant to be a port at Manda Bay, that was meant to be a standard gauge railway, that was meant to be a highway from Lamu, a crude oil plant, a resort and a refinery plant. All of them have not started. And when it is going to end, when it is going to be done is not known. At least by 2024, as we speak, no progress has been registered. Much as it is in the vision of Kenya of 2030, meaning they expect it to be done by 2030, but by now there is no progress that can be seen. Now, this project did not start yesterday. It was initiated in 1975. But in 2009, in 2009 it was estimated to cost approximately 15 billion then 15 million dollars then it increased from 16 million dollars to 20 to, to, to 20 22 million dollars to 29 by 2015 so you see issues of money coming in issues of the budget the project that was estimated much as the value of the money is back then could be different now. In 1975, when it was initiated, it was meant to be 15 million US dollars. By 2015, it jumped all the way to 22 million dollars. And by now, it is estimated that the budget of the Lamu project is meant to be around 23 and 29 million US dollars. So you see that budget also comes in there. The financing comes in there. And you find that these projects Oh, the, 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 these countries are, you know, are putting their head and soul on the international funding to be able to finance these projects. When do these countries ever sit and plan and say, look here, we want to start the Lampset project, but this is the source of financing within ourselves, within our country, or at most within our region. Okay? You can borrow from Uganda to uh, facilitate a project in Kenya. If you're Uganda, you can borrow from uh, uh, Kenya to facilitate a project in Uganda, not going for Asian countries, not going for European countries, who are in most instances going to disappoint you. So the Lapsed project has had stumbling blocks, majorly financing and other issues along the way, and this has really, really made the project to stall for so long, to fail to kickstart, to fail to register any progress, much as it is in the vision of Kenya of 2030 to be done at that time. The number three project, the other project, the third project in Kenya that has stalled is the mega, mega, mega Pinnacle Tower. Now the Pinnacle Tower, before construction, or according to plan, was meant to be the highest or the tallest building in Kenya and the tallest building in East Africa. The Pinnacle Tower is literally sometimes referred as the Pinnacle Towers because the Pinnacle Tower was supposed to be adjacent to another tower uh, of photo-story, of photo -story, a photo-story building, another tower that was meant to have shops. Okay? Now, this uh, story building is adjacent to the main building, a 70 story building. Okay, so it is referred to the Pinnacle Towers because it is a tower that is, it is, there are two towers, but in the same, in the same locale, with different bases, okay? One is adjacent to the other, so that's why they are called the Pinnacle Towers, 
but in most instances you want to call it the Pinnacle Tower. Now, the Pinnacle Tower is one of the tallest buildings that have not kicked off in Kenya. I like, the, like what we're going to see in Uganda. These projects are mega to an extent that sometimes the countries cannot finance them themselves and they look up to the international support. Now, when they are disappointed, then you find they have no other avenues to finance these projects. So the Pinnacle Tower has faced the, uh, the same wrath of failing to kickstart because of the budgets, but also, uh, but also uh, the issues to do with the land where this project is meant to sit. It is believed, it is thought that one of the richest Ugandan tycoons is among the people that are claiming to be the owners of the land on which this pinnacle tower was meant to sit. One James Mugoya is a rich man that it works in collaboration with the, with the Prince of Qatar and they are among those people that are claiming to be the owners, the right owners of the land where the pinnacle tower was meant to sit and were threatening to go to court if the Spinnacle Tower was ever to kickstart before they are compensated fully for owning this land. So, this uh, tower that was meant to be located four kilometers away from Nairobi has faced the wrath and failed to kickstart because it was proposed that by 2015, the proposal to have this building was done in 2015 and by 2017, the first contract construction was meant to be starting, but by 2024, no progress, zero progress can be seen of this project. Now, this project was meant to have commercial offices, retail outlets, was meant to have an upscale residential apartments, luxurious hotels. The Hilton Hotel, the, like I said, the adjacent building, the seven-story building was meant to be the main main tower, and then the adjacent building was meant to house a hotel, the popular Hilton Hotel. But because of these misunderstandings and rambles to do with the land, and then the failure to uh, finance the budget for this project have hindered the progress, have hindered the construction of this building, hence hindering the entire benefits that the country could have gotten from this. Because if this uh, let's say is able to house about 20,000 people, have retail shops for about 12,000 people, then have a hotel. In other words, it is adding to the economy of the country. So if it fails to start, then it has really done a disservice to the country. So we hope that they are able to resolve these problems, resolve the issues to, uh, with the, to do with the land, with Mugoya, a tycoon from Uganda who claims to be the rightful owner of the land where it is supposed to sit, so that the project can go on, the project can progress. Otherwise, by 2024, nothing is going on, there is no progress that can be seen of this project. And that's why we thought we should bring it to your attention, if you are a resident of Kenya, ask questions, why is this not kick-starting, it was meant to be done by 2017, at least the first construction was meant to be done. Even at a regional level of East Africa, you can still ask questions. Because when development is done in Kenya, it benefits somewhere, somehow. The trickle effect goes down to Uganda, goes down to Tanzania, to Rwanda, to Ethiopia, to all the neighboring countries, because it would be one stop center of a, um, a project. So, we thought we would bring it to your attention. Now, we go to Uganda. Oh my God. There are so many projects in Uganda that have stalled. Others have failed to move from the design level itself. Died a natural death. And in Uganda today, we're going to start with the renowned, the notable specialized hospital of Lugoa. I don't know for how long we are going to discuss this project in Uganda. This project, in one way or the other, has failed to see light of the day. This is a project that one of one a one called Peneti was meant to spearhead, was given the rights to do the construction, and at one point hand it over to Uganda after she has 
you know, um, you know, ripped from it, gotten what she invested from it. And then at a certain point, Uganda itself had to lend the money to this investor to be able to invest in the hospital. And this is one of the things that raised eyebrows of so many Ugandans to ask themselves, look, what's happening? How do you lend the money to an investor to invest in a hospital? So, so many things have been talked about. There was uh, rumors that even the M member of parliament who always passed the budgets for this hospital almost every other year were blocked from accessing this project. So when you look at this project, there's nothing. No construction has been going on for a long period of time. Just all you can see is a vast land and then constructions that are still at the level of you know, the grassroots level, nothing is going up like a building and the place has been cordoned off by the police and then cordoned off with, you know, iron sheet so that you don't even see what's going on inside. So this multi-million project has stalled for so long and yet was meant to be a specialized hospital that would benefit the country from, from you know, taking out the monies from the economy. People seek for specialized uh, uh, attention from neighboring countries, Nairobi, South Africa. They go to Turkey, they go to different places. Yet this specialized hospital would have helped them to be able to work on those peculiar, very high-end high -end cases, heart transplant, transplant, so many things bone marrow transplant and so many other things that this hospital hosp uh, specialized hospital of Lugoa could have worked on. So this project has stalled. This project, we don't even know when it is going to ever get done. We don't even know if any progress is going on because as per reports in recent, uh, in a few, week, a few weeks ago, it was reported but that the leader of opposition together with other uh, uh, leaders from opposition, member of parliament, were blocked from accessing the premises of Lubowa Specialized Hospital. So that is a project we could bring to your attention as well in regards to Uganda. The other project in Uganda that has also failed to see the light of the day is the standard gauge delivery. Now there are so many factors that could have led to the stalment of the standard gauge delivery. First of all, the standard gauge dairy does not begin in Uganda. It has, it begins in Kenya. So Kenya has to do its part for Uganda to do its part. When Kenya fails to do its part, then Uganda cannot progress. However, according to a layman's understanding, I thought maybe Uganda can start from wherever it is starting, if it's from the border with Kenya, do its part up to Kampala, then from Kampala, because it is supposed to come up to Kampala through Jinja, then go through Kampala, uh, go to be able to go to Sudan, and another one to Congo, and another tributary. Are they called tributaries as well? As well? I don't know. But another branch. One branch is to Sudan, another one to Congo which could have really helped trade, uh, which could have as well brought down the, co the costs of transport. You know, transporting the container by road from Mombasa to Uganda could be cheaper if it is by railway system. But this project has failed to see the light of the day and indeed the country has again embarked on refurbishing the old railway system that was there. Something that brings to question uh, if this standard gauge level will ever take off. However, every other day, the country, the leaders of the, of, of the country in Uganda show you or want to prove to you that there is progress that is being registered in regards to agreements that are meant to be in place to see that the standard gauge level takes place. Now, this 45.6 trillion project, approximately $12.8 billion dollars, uh, was meant to be built by the China farm. Now, the contract of the China farm that was meant to build the standard gauge, gauge layer was at a certain point cancelled and then uh, after failing to do any progress in eight years, their contract was not renewed. The contract was indeed not renewed because it had not expired but was revoked because there is nothing they could show after eight years. And now the Yapi Makezi uh, farm from Turkey 
uh, is one of those, is the one that was given the mantle to build the 273 kilometer Mombasa up to Kampala uh, Lere for a tune of $2.2 billion. So there is a slight progress in terms of agreements uh, to rejuvenate this project. The contract that was made with the China firm to build this project was revoked after eight years of stallment, and now the uh, contract was awarded to the uh, to uh, to Kie. Some people don't know that Turkey changed the name from Turkey to Tokie. So the contract was given to a Tokie farm, Yebi Makezi, which is going to uh, embark on the construction anytime soon of the standard gauge dairy. But when and how it will be done is yet to be known because by this time at least notable progress was meant to be seen but has not been seen. So one of the factors that has led to its installment is one financing where some uh, some international uh, firms uh, retracted and then the stallment by the uh, by the china farm that was meant to build this uh, project but also the stallment on the kenyan side has also affected this project from taking off so the other project that has failed to see the light of the day is the econ city that was promised by the renowned usa musician and an origin whose back whose roots are in Senegal. He's a second in Galiz anyway. Econ promised to Uganda is one of those projects that have never or are likely never to start. There's no any trace of anything in any part of Uganda that shows that the Econ city is about to start or will ever start. Not even an electricity board has been raised somewhere, not even a road, not even a plot of land that you could hear in rumors that has been purchased to be able to be used to build the Econ City. Well, at one point there were rumors that this project was meant to be in Mukono, blah, 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 but nothing has gone beyond that. It is one of those projects that are seemingly dying a natural death. The Econ City was promised to Ugandans and every Ugandan, even all people in East Africa were excited about this project, which was meant to be a technological city in the heart of Uganda, in Uganda. So everyone was excited about the Econ City. It made news all over the place. Every tabloid, every newspaper, every TV station talked about this. But ever since the announcement, nothing can be seen anywhere in regards to this project. There are a number of issues that are being attributed to this, but must, but most notably, there is that one reason that still in rumors, because we we can't talk about it, the fact that it's still in rumor, but there's an element that is being spearheaded as to why that project might never ever take off. And there's an element of corruption somewhere. It is anticipated that there were chunks of money that were stolen from Econ. So he's coming to promise Uganda a city was never indeed about the city, but to hunt for whoever stole money from him. Actually, the money was not stolen from him, but from the wife. So he came down and used, I'm going to build you a city, but only to go after the people that had stolen money from the wife. So this Econ city that made people, every Ugandan excited, is one of the projects that are likely never to get started in Uganda. Forget about it. Much as he said that by 3036, this uh, city will be constructed and ready for people to start using it, but there's much likelihood that it might never start in Uganda. You see, you give people such an excitement news, you give people such hope, you give people that hopes, people start envisioning Uganda having a city so clean, full of literally everything that you need, beautiful roads, uh, playgrounds, I mean leisure places, you, schools, hospitals, because if it's a city, it literally has everything within it. But all of a sudden, this project, poof, dies a natural death. It is sad, but it is one of those projects that we think might never, ever start in Uganda. Now, the last of all is one of the projects that literally, I want to believe, none of the Ugandans has ever heard about. 
or oh, most of the Udanans have never ever heard about or read anywhere and this is the Kampala Tower. People, there was one point when Uganda was made to have the tallest building in East Africa, if not in Africa, and this is the Kampala Tower that was meant to be where there is the Uganda Museum. You look at the Uganda Museum and then the, celebrity, the surrounding areas of Chitante Primary School, that is where the Kampala Tower was meant to be constructed. A 60 storied building which died a natural death and people stopped talking about it, but only stopped at the design level. There are so many issues that have been raised as to why this project died a natural death. Among them is definitely, like any other project, financing. The country seems to have failed to get hold of the finances to be able to build this Kampala Tower and therefore it has died a natural death. It was anticipated to be completed by 2020 because the original idea was hatched in 2011 for this project. So it was meant to take that long for the construction of this project, but for six or for eight or so years, nothing can be registered. And this city, this building was meant to sit on a hundred acres of land. You can see the magnitude, the, the width, the, you can see how big this tower was meant to be. So it was, it was, this tower was meant to be 222 meters high and was meant to have retail shops, was meant to approximately cater for 12,500 people. You see, how many people would have benefited from it? How many jobs it would have created for people? How it would have uplifted the status quo of our country, of our city? Because as we speak, the, I don't think we even have a 25 story building in Uganda, but this was going to be a 60 or so story building in Uganda, the Kampala Tower, that never saw the light of the day and probably might never was stopped at the emphasis stage the design stage and that's it so i want to believe that all these countries that we've talked about kenya uganda tanzania before you embark on a project and making the audience making the population excited and very eager plan on how you're going to finance it don't just, you know, believe that the international community, China, those the international firms, are just going to inject all the monies, not expecting to reap. Those are the disappointments that we get along the way, and our projects fail to see the light of the day. So, the Kampala Tower also has faced the same wrath, and probably will never see the light of the day. And that's why most people don't even know that at one point, there was meant to be this tower. So that's what we had for you today on as a matter of uh, that's what we had for you today on Africa and our covered YouTube channel and we want to appreciate you for taking off some time off your busy schedule to be part of this product broadcast we th we want to think that it has given you insights on those mega mega budget projects that have failed to kick start in this in these three countries and we thought we'd bring them to your attention if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Share, like, and tell a friend to be part of this podcast that we do weekly, where we want to think that we really give you in, uh, information that is of value, that adds something onto you. Otherwise, from me to you, I'm TJ. Adios.